Let's talk about lists and how to count them. When we were first introducing the notion of a set, one of the distinctions that we wanted to make is that sets are different than lists. Then we were relying on a colloquial definition of lists. Let's actually define it for this class. Definition. A list is an ordered sequence of objects. Notation. We're going to use parentheses and then the elements separated by commas. Two things that we want to highlight right off the bat is that order matters. So for example, this list two, four, six is not equal to the list six, four, two, even though they have the same elements. And also repetition or frequency matters. So for example, the list two, two, three is not the same as the list two, three, three, even though, again, they have the same elements. The, in the first, there are two twos, and in the second, there are two threes. Once we have an object, we can start describing that object. Let's talk about the size of lists. Definition. The length of a list is the number of elements in the list. So for example, two comma three comma three has length three. When describing the length of lists, the size of lists, um, there's a lot of specialized vocab. So let's just knock some of this out. For example, the empty list denoted parentheses with nothing in them is a list of length zero. An ordered pair is a list of length two. And more broadly, you might hear the word n-tuple. And n-tuple is a list of length n. Uh, you'll encounter a lot of this, for example, when describing n dimensional space. So as you all know, you know, if you're in n dimensional space, this is going to be two space, two, one. This point right here is going to be two comma one. And so coordinates in a two-dimensional space, a two-dimensional Cartesian plane is, uh, is often represented as an ordered pair. And n-dimensional space will be an n-tuple. Let's talk explicitly about how we know when two lists are equal to each other or what we mean when we say two lists are equal to each other. This turns out to be um, very strict. So two lists are equal if they have two properties. One, they have the same lengths. And two, the elements in the corresponding spots are equal. They have to be exactly the same. So for example, one, one, two, is not equal to one, two. First of all, they have different lengths, the first of length three, the second of length two, and second of all, um, they actually have different elements, one, then one, then two, versus one, then two. Also, one, comma, one, comma, one, another example. Say this is equal to, say I claim that this was equal to the list x, comma, y, comma, z. This happens if and only if, as in it happens precisely when and only when x is 1, y is 1, and z, they're all 1. Now that we know what a list is and we have some vocabulary around this, let's talk about how to count them. And let's start off by doing an example and asking a question. So here's a question for you. How many possible sets of initials for a person, for persons, whose first name uh, starts with a vowel and last name starts with a consonant. For example, Octavia Butler. For ease of this discussion, we're st sticking to the standard um, English alphabet with 26 letters, um, no accents, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so let's 
break down what this question is actually asking us. What are we working with? Well, just to remind you, the number of vowels is five, A-E-I-O-U, and the number of consonants is therefore 21, B, C, all the way up to Z. In order to answer the question that we have, let's organize. So we're gonna organize in the following way. There's gonna be a new row for new first initial, which are gonna be vowels, and a new column for a new second initial. So that's a consonant. So in the top left of this grid that we're gonna make is gonna be A comma B. And since each row is for each individual initial, the first row is going to be for A, so it's gonna be A, B, A, comma, C, all the way up to A, comma, Z. Those are the possible uh, sets of initials, uh, starting with A, and having a consonant for the second initial. The second line is going to be dedicated to E, and the, the columns uh, all have the same, uh, are consistent in terms of the second initial, the consonant. So it's E, B, E, comma, C, all the way up to E, comma, Z. And then um, in the last row, we're gonna have U, B, U, C, U, C. Okay. Just by laying it out this way, it becomes fairly um, easy to see what size grid we've made. This forms a five by 21 grid that contains all the possibilities. We've exhausted all the possibilities. And that gives us 105 possibilities. This was uh, just by way of an example to introduce you uh, what hopefully will feel a little bit natural, which is the multiplication principle. So this is exactly what we're just exploring. So the number of lists of length k for which there are n i choices for the ith element is n sub 1 times n sub 2 times dot 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 times n sub k, which in product notation is just uh, the product of n i as i ranges from 1 to k. Here i is our dummy variable and k is the length of the list. This would be uh, helped by some examples. So uh, just to recover the example that we talked about. So um, if the first initial is a vowel and the second initial is a consonant, how many ordered pairs? As in how many sets of initials? Well, what's the length of the list? Two, so k is equal to two. How many choices do you have for the first of the ordered pair, the first initial, five. How many choices do you have for the second initial? The consonant, 21. So the number of possible initials, sets of initials, by the multiplication principle, again, is five by 21. Here's a complicating question. What if both elements were being pulled from the same pool. Before we had uh, the first uh, element being pulled from vowels, the second element being pulled from the consonants. Uh, so an example of this is how many possible sets of initials are there? Well, we can use the multiplication principle. K is equal to two. How many possibilities are there for the first initial? That's N1, that's 26, because it can be any letter. How many possibilities are there for the second initial? This is N2, that's also 26, since it also can be uh, any letter. So the answer is going to be 26 by 26, which is 26 squared. Also 26 to the K, where K is the length of the list, and 26 was the size of the pool. Here's another complicating question. Question, what if repetitions were not allowed? As in, say you're supposed to um, find out uh, how many possible initials are there, but the person cannot have the same initial for the first and last name. 
How many possible initials are there for persons with different first and second initials? And with a little thought, we can figure this out. So here's a note for you. For each person, and it may be different for each person, whatever their first initial is, their second initial must be different. So that means, okay, how long is the list two? Because you're thinking about first and last names. How many choices are there for the first initial? Well, 26, because it can be any, any letter. But then how many choices do you have for the second initial? Well, it's every, for each person, it's everything but the first initial that you've already chosen. The, the pool is actually 25 for each person. So answer, 26 times 25 is 650. So in general, what we have is a theorem, which is a true mathematical statement um, of relative importance. <laughs> the number of lists of length k whose elements are chosen from a pool of n possible elements is n to the k if repetitions are allowed and n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus k plus 1 if repetitions are forbidden. Here's your theorem. Here's a question calling back to the last class. How many ways are there to make a list of length 0 from a pool of n possible elements. Think about this. Well, the last thing I want you to notice, which will come into play a lot in our future lessons, is this last expression in our theorem. So we're looking at n times n minus 1 times all the way down to n minus k plus 1. We can express this as a fraction. So this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to multiplying by 1, as long as we take out the factors that are missing on the left-hand side. So we're going to divide by n minus k, n minus k minus 1, all the way down to 1. This is n factorial over n minus k factorial. And remember what this represents. It is the number of lists of length k whose elements are chosen from a pool of n possible elements if repetitions are not allowed. All right. See you next class.